It's the Nike Hot Seat here on Takedown. I'm Scott Casper, very special guest, a man that rocks the locks no better. Nobody better in the country that does it. He joins us now, does Jake Herbert. Jake, how are you, buddy? Doing very well, Scott, man. Thanks for having me on, especially this Nike Hot Seat, man. Nobody better than having a Nike-sponsored athlete here on the Hot Seat. How about that? Olympic mm-hmm. rankings are out, done by our own Dan Lobdell, the December men's freestyle rankings. We've got the lock on 86. Uh, first impression when you saw the rankings. You guys did a fantastic job. I was either going to be really happy or really upset. <laughs> I mean, well, you got I the number one down, and that's really in the end game that all that matters, that, you know, number two through seven, you can finish wherever you want, but that doesn't mean you're going over to Rio. Andy, uh, Andy Rovet told um, uh, Dan at the, at the Bill Farrell about your shoulder injury. Is there a shoulder injury? Uh, well, I know it's hard to look at these muscular things, but I got the stitches taken out last Wednesday. I had my shoulder scoped. I already have full range of motion. I set a two, I think, Guinness Books of World Guinness Book of World Records for fastest going from shoulder surgery to full range mobility, and then I was fastest of doing um, getting shoulder surgery and then doing a front handspring two weeks later. Wow! So, I mean, anytime you have invasive surgery uh, and muscle or tissue or tendons moved or bone structure altered. Um, it, it, in the old days, it would take quite a while to, re, you know, to recover. But uh, today's modern athletes, guys like you that set the bar, uh, are making some rapid advancements. Can you talk a little bit about how you rehab and how you jump back into it without favoring the shoulder? Oh, it's just a daily thing. I mean, you, you, you like it's completely different for being uh, an elite athlete and, like I said, a normal human being. If I was a normal human being, not trying to win, you know, world and Olympic titles. I, w- I would never even need the shoulder. I could get through day-to-day life doing all I do. But to be able to smash Sajalai off and beat these Iranians and these tough guys that are coming out, I need everything at 100% to put myself in the best position possible to win. So I do everything a little different. When you when you see your normal people going in and doing physical therapy, they go three times a week, right? And they maybe do it once or twice outside of you know their physical therapy. That's it. This is my job. You know, this morning, range of motion. This afternoon, I got my next range of motion. At night, I'm doing my range of motion, my exercises again. So I actually have a plan that not only do I stick to, but I do it outside of physical therapy. So it's not just the time in physical therapy. It's all the stuff I'm doing outside of it too to build this base back up so that three weeks from now when I'm back on the mat, my shoulder is going to be strong. I'm going to ease my way back into it because I don't need to be full fed and ready to go until my 31st birthday, March 6th, when I qualify um, our weight class for the Olympics. And that's it. The weight has yet to be qualified for the Olympic Games in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, and nobody would like to uh, man that uh, seat uh, more than Jake Herbert, I guess, uh, NYC wrestler, 86 kilos, training out of Michigan, of course. Uh, Ed Ruth is uh, in the number two spot. You've got tough guys, Keith Gavin, Chris Perry, Clayton Foster, Johnny Reeder, uh, and others. Kyle Dake make, make, making the move to 86, yet to prove himself into the top five, but you know he's going to be a danger. What about David Taylor? Uh, Jake, what are your thoughts about your weight class top 10? I love it. I can't wait to watch the U.S. Open. And and now with all these guys, I guess, bumping away from Jordan at 74, this is making 86 kilo one of the best weight classes out there uh, that we have. I mean, it's almost as much fun as 66. Now, don't get me wrong. 66 is probably still my uh, – or sorry, 65 kilos now. It's still my favorite weight class to watch. I mean, you got James Green, Metcalf, Pico, you know, Frank Molinaro, Jimmy Kennedy, Kellen Russell, BJ Fruchel. I mean, that that anybody in that top 10 can make it, and that's the way that weight class always is. But now with the bigger guys up at 86, I cannot wait for the U.S. Open to happen here in like 17 days and watch how these guys play out. Now, you're not going to be actually competing at the U.S. Open, correct? Nope, just, just watching and sitting there scouring and just uh, – you know, I'll let everybody else beat each other up for uh, their spot. I'm already qualified for the Olympic trials. Obviously, with the shoulder surgery, I wouldn't be ready in time, and it, it doesn't really serve me any purpose to go. So if we can, we look forward to where you will be competing next in action. Where will the fans be able to catch up with you? I, I think the next one is what it's looking like is going to be uh, the Pan American qualifier down in Dallas, Texas on my birthday, uh, March 6th. It's on my schedule. Oh, yeah. On the 6th of March. So, yeah, that would be perfect. And then, of course, the Olympic trials in Iowa City, right? 
Yep. And that's, I've had a good place there. I mean, I have my, uh, my steel city to London gold. That's where I made my first Olympic team. And that's where I'm looking to make my second Olympic team. Let's do some business. You and Andy Rovat, obviously in business to change the complexion of, uh, tournaments and the way coaches are coaching around the country, putting fun back into the sport of wrestling. Talk to us a little bit about that. Well, it's doing great. Like I said, right now we're, we're really thankful to be able to work with beat the streets, New York city. We're remotely, uh, running a few programs from Michigan here. So I'm working with the coaches, I'm talking with them, and it's to really finish off and implement our base wrestling training system. What we want to do is lay out a path for these youth coaches, middle school coaches, and high school coaches so that they can have a cohesive plan to be able to put the best wrestler that they can into Kale Sanderson's position and onto John Smith's team, onto Sean Bormet's team, you know, here in Michigan. But wherever it goes, we want to be able to build out the plan to be like, hey, no matter when you start wrestling, these are the basic fundamental skills that you need. This is the athleticism that you need. And then here's the mental and the, you know, the mental approach that you need. So we, we broke it down into physical development, uh, your technical development, and your mental approach. And all three need to be developed at all times. And depending on your age, if you're you know, a, a youth – you know, if you're first, second, third grade, you're going to need something different in all three areas than you do as a, you know, high school kid or an elite athlete. But we were able to start with our training system that we use at Cliff Keen Wrestling Club and work completely backwards from it. So I'm really looking forward to it. I really think those days of like coaches being proud and saying, hey, wrestling's just too hard of a sport. We started with 60 kids. We ended our season with 40 kids, you know, and a coach tells me that really, really proud. I don't think as a youth wrestling coach, that's something to be proud of. Because your middle school coach isn't going to appreciate you sending 40 kids up instead of 60 kids, you know, or you starting the season with 80 kids and then running half of them off. Uh, you just, you know, at the youth level, it's just a different mindset. We shouldn't be looking to win youth national titles. We should be looking to set these kids up with physical literacy and get them to start to love and learn the sport of wrestling. So that by middle school and high school, we want to take that long-term approach so that they're going to be ready to have all the tools so that if they choose, they can go on, you know, to be college wrestlers if they want to be. They can go on to be, you know, better football players, basketball players, but it's it's going to help them in life just like wrestling has for so many of us out there listening right now. Dan Lobdell's released the December men's freestyle rankings. He goes across the board. Well, freestyle is where we are today. And 86 is what we're talking about. Jake Herbert, our guest. Jake, of course, that man in the catbird seat, the number one spot at 86 kilos. Is it comfortable or uncomfortable to know that you're constantly being shot at? It's great. I mean, I, I was talking to Rich Bender a little bit about it the other day, and he says, hey, until you get beat, you're on top. You know, you're our guy until somebody else can prove you in the USA. And it was, you know, Keith Gavin in 13, and it was Ed Ruth in 14. And I was sitting there on the sidelines watching saying, hey, I'm going to be done with my career. I'm going to go start work and everything. And then it kind of hit me like, hey, you only have, you know, this, this amount of time in your life to be able to go after and say, hey, I actually have a legitimate shot of bringing home a gold medal. So, you know, I stepped it up. I was able to win the Open uh, in 15 here, and I was able to, you know, smash Ed at the World Team Trials. Uh, you know, it wasn't really even close. So right now it's my spot, and, and Ed is beating everybody else really badly. So and, until I see it differently, until somebody can step up and beat me, uh, that's mine to take. Or sorry, that's theirs to take. But mine well, to keep. No doubt you've watched Ruth's performance since Bill Farrell. He cruised his way to a title there. Uh, what are you seeing in his game that you like, and what do you see as his weaknesses? Uh, I mean, Ed's great. He's such a fun wrestler to watch. He's so offensive. He's great. Um, you know, but I don't know if his focus is full time there with wrestling. I know he's already signed his Bellator contract and know he loves MMA. Um, you know, I think that just might be, be the big thing is there's not a Bellator contract currently on the line for me right now. MMA is not really something that they've come and gone after me too much for. And at 30 years old, that transition is a little different. I mean, but it can be done. Look at Daniel Cormier. Look at Dan Henderson. They're still doing it if that's something I so choose to. But I'm really more passionate about um, working with our youth wrestling coaches across the nation, working with middle schools and high schools across the nation. Um, you know, than anything else, because that's where I'm going to be able to have the biggest impact on our sport is helping, you know, coaches and programs. Well, at 30 years old, he sits in the catbird seat, number one spot at 86 kilos. Jake, the age, obviously a focus for some, and in this case, it is for me. Why? Because two have announced their retirements, one on either side of you. At 33 years old, Nick Simmons, the associate head coach at Indiana, has announced his retirement from competition, a longtime member of Team USA. And then Brandon Preeson, the young phenom out of uh, Illinois, 27 years old, announces his retirement from active competition. What are your thoughts when you hear this? 
it's just it's it's different you know for every single person it's different it depends on where you're at with your life what you're doing you know do you have income are you able to make this work do you have a family so and, and really when that bug gets out of you i mean you look right steven Abbas just recently came back and competed i think for the first time you know, outside of those couple of matches but went over to france and, and competed so is that something he's serious about uh you don't really know but it's it's different for everyone. Brandon, you know, was training with us at the Cliff Keen Wrestling Club, and he kind of put it really well. Uh, he said that, hey, he was always, you know, he wasn't always the most talented wrestler. He wasn't always the most athletic. He won a lot because of his grit and his fight, and he just outworked everybody in college. And he's starting to notice it here the last couple of years in his career that 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 fight, that grit just wasn't there anymore. And when it's not there anymore, there's nothing you can really do unless you can have some sort of monumental, like, coming to wrestling where I want to get that fire and that passion going again. And the same thing happened with me. I mean, if I didn't take those two years off after the 2012 Olympics, who knows if I would have gotten that fire back or not. And uh, I got it back and I'm using it and it's great, but you know, uh, it, it's put really well. And that's why I really want to work with these, these, these youth wrestlers, because once you start competing at that level and that fire starts burning, you don't have infinite fuel. You can create all the fuel you want to keep it going. But at some point in time, your body's going to give out, your mind's going to give out. You're not going to want it anymore. So why start that at six, seven, eight years old, these kids? Why not wait till 14, 15, 16 to really get them serious about c competing? Because Tom Brands isn't handing out scholarships you know, for the youth winning, uh, you know, for the youth winning tournaments, what they want to see is high school kids. They want to see you place as a sophomore. They want to see you do better as a junior, and they want to see you do your best as a senior because you're on that up and up. Not win states as a freshman, qualify for states as a sophomore, and then don't qualify the last two years. You're not going to get a college scholarship that way. So I think we really got to step back and look at that long term planning of our athletes and longevity because, like you said. Some do it at 30, some retire earlier at 25, some retire, you know, later at 33. It's, it's different for every person. You mentioned the, the mind breaking down or the body breaking down. What about the heart? Yeah, that's, and that's the biggest key. Cause you got to love it. I mean, once, and, and it's a really good quote, you know, once you've gone through hell and that's what it is to make an Olympic team, to make a world team. I literally had to have the same thing done in 2012, my, my shoulder, my left shoulder needed complete labor uh, surgery. And I was lucky enough to go in and get it scoped. And I was back on the mat by uh, February, able to make the Olympic trials and compete in the Olympics. And I had to do the same exact thing here again. So that's, that's a sacrifice you got to be willing to make. And that, that comes from here. That comes from your heart. And if your heart's not in it and your heart's not in what you're doing, you're never going to be successful because you're never going to be passionate and love what you're doing. We're talking with Jake Herbert. Jake, uh, it's always good to talk to you. And, of course, fans, we want to invite you to check out the entirety of the rankings and the commentary by, uh, in our mind anyway, one of the best out there, Dan Lobdell. And uh, it was published December 1st. Uh, and that, of course, being today, the December men's freestyle rankings are out. Jake Herbert has been our guest. He sits at number one at 86 kilos. Jake, give him the website for you and uh, your partner's business and uh, tell everybody how they can be in touch with you. Awesome. A anytime you get my email address is just my name, Jake at DoubleLegNinja.com. Shoot me an email about anything that I can do to help you guys with. If you want some more information on base wrestling, let me know about that, basewrestling.com. Uh, I'll direct you and I can send you some stuff over. If you guys want information on how to support me, if you order your team gear through Double Egg Ninja, you know, I can do that for you too. And it goes to help everything that I'm doing because all, all the money I make off of it goes to my Olympic training. And then it goes into, you know, creating this base wrestling training system because I want to be able to, you know, to help coach a thousand youth programs, middle school programs and high school programs. You know, I want to be your guys' online assistant wrestling coach. And I want to be here for you and, and be able to help our sport, not just survive, but thrive in a place where it should be because the wrestling room should be the cornerstone of every community. It should be like the football field because you can access it all year round despite the weather. And that's where kids can learn to flip, move, spin, wrestle, and become the best they can be. Jake Herbert, always good to talk to you. We appreciate it, brother. Best yep, of luck love on you guys, the recovery. Man, thank you very much for having me in the Nike hot spot. Nike hot seat. It's not a hot seat. Oh, sorry, I had a spot. The seat. It could be a hot spot. I don't know. It might be a hot spot. Anyway, Jake, <laughs> always good to talk to you, brother. Thank you very much for the time today. Thank you, Scott. Love hearing your voice. It's soothing. Yeah, yeah I appreciate that. I'm Scott Casper for Takedown. Thanks for watching.